a family's quiet joy, captured to share with the nation. Still, there are people missing from this crowd. Aidan McInesby's mother and father didn't live to see this moment, but they fought for it. John, Aidan's father, the day that the PPS announced that David Holden was going to be prosecuted, he said that the only demand that he has is that he hears the truth. Some people say the word, are you happy with the victory? No, ultimately we're not happy because Aidan McInesby is dead. Aidan McInesby shouldn't be dead. This story begins in 1988 at an army checkpoint in County Tyrone. Aidan McInesby, known to security forces as a person of interest, was on his way to a football match. He was shot when a bullet ricocheted off the road and struck his back. It was a teenager who pulled the trigger. 18-year-old David Holden, serving with the Grenadier Guards. Today, at 53, he was found guilty of manslaughter by gross negligence. His argument, that his finger slipped on the trigger, was toppled by a verdict that ruled he'd acted assuming the gun was not cocked. This was the ultimate take-no-chances situation because the risk of disaster was so great, said the judge. Here's a potted timeline of the events of this case. In 1990, the initial manslaughter charge was dropped. A police report in 2008 said the soldier's description of events was the least likely version of what happened. Then, a year later, the British government issued an apology expressing deep regret over Mr McNesby's death. In 2016, Northern Ireland's Public Prosecution Service decided to review the decision not to proceed with manslaughter charges. And two years later, it was announced that Holden would be charged with manslaughter by gross negligence. And in between, there have been demonstrations of grief and grievance, just over three decades of chasing the truth. This isn't just a story about the often sluggish nature of the justice system. In the same way that Aidan McInesby's case took various twists and turns, so too has the politics between Britain and Northern Ireland. What's at stake now is the so-called Troubles Bill. The UK government is proposing an effective amnesty for those suspected of killings during the conflict if they agree to cooperate with an independent commission. David Holden is the first veteran to be convicted of a historical offence in Northern Ireland since the 1998 Good Friday Agreement, and he could be the last. We cannot forget that there are many other families in Northern Ireland who are also waiting for justice for their loved ones. It cannot be right that the UK government is deciding who is above the law for serious crimes such as manslaughter, murder and torture. So we call on the UK government to drop this bill. The sense of persecution goes two ways. For us, the witch hunt continues. That's why we support this legacy bill that's going through Parliament right now, which will stop any further prosecutions of, of veterans that have been previously investigated. The judge said David Holden gave a deliberately false account of what happened. The Ministry of Defence says it'll continue to support him if he decides to appeal. Other families will be wondering what precedent today's ruling sets. Well, earlier I spoke to Aidan McInesby's cousin, Brian Gormley, and I asked him for his reaction to the verdict. Well, it's, it's a very strange emotion, uh, Christian. Uh, loads of mixed emotions, obviously, today. Uh, we're very relieved with the judgment that was handed down today, but we're still mindful of those people who aren't with us that was probably at the start of this campaign. We think, as a family, we're thinking very much of Aidan today. Uh, we thought very much about his sister, Ailey. She was one of the main campaigners in the first 20 years until she died at an early young age uh, for... Aidan's mother, Lizzie, we thought about her, and then John, who her father, uh, Aidan's father, who passed away there just less than two months ago. Uh, so it's a load, load of mixed emotions. What does it do to a family when something like this happens and you don't know whether you're going to get your day in court? Well, realistically, a family's presented with, with two choices. 
uh, at the start is that you can just accept what has happened to you uh, and just roll over or you can decide that actually you know what that person's life was worth more than actually just forgetting about him let it become a statistic those people who campaigned in those early years his sister Elish in particular uh, we feel that we owed it to those people that we actually tried it as best as we possibly could to get as close to justice as we possibly can and, and do you do you think that cases where there is evidence against paramilitaries should also be pursued in the same way? Absolutely, Christian. For, for example, during the Troubles, at the height of the Troubles, loads of paramilitary people from both Catholic tradition and Protestant tradition faced the full rigours of the law. Now, the only one group that didn't face the full rigours of the law was state forces. So you have to ask, why is the British government pushing ahead with this legacy bill? Well, what's your answer? Well, my answer is obviously it's, it's, it seeks to protect one of the protagonists in the, the conflict that occurred here over 30 years. And that protagonist is the British Army and state forces. That's in reality. That's the only reason that there's an amnesty bill going through. It's possible that your case will be the only one that comes to trial because of this new legislation. Had your family been one of those whose case won't come to trial, where would that have left you? Well, well, uh, well I think the, the, the question that members of the public, and especially your audience, Christian, should be asking, do you think that is a judicial system within a democratic country? That's the first question they must ask themselves. Do you think that that fits the bill of a judicial system within a democratic country? And I think that any right-minded, reasonably thinking person will say that every crime that is committed, regardless who commits it, if it's done by someone in a state uniform, a, a paramilitary, a member of the public, they should be subject to the full rigours of the law, the same as every other person. Brian Gormley, thank you very much indeed. Well, the Northern Ireland office told us the legacy bill seeks to address Northern Ireland's past by implementing an effective recovery process for families and help society to look forward.